Sorry, everybody. I ran out of uh, space on my phone, so I had to make some room. Um, but yeah, we were just talking about your experiences at the Knott's Berry Farm. Knott's Berry Farm. So that was uh, that was the beginning of actually a long road during the caricature thing. I was really only there for a year. Um, uh, so I started doing the portraits, and then you switched. To and then I switched caricatures. to caricatures. At one point, the boss decided uh, his name was Lee Harvin. He uh, he he's uh, he passed away a few years ago. But um, he, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh yeah, it's uh, you know he, he lived he lived a long prosperous life. So, but um, yeah, he just he decided he's like he could make more money off of me uh, in the caricatures and you know. Uh, Actually, was, that, was that like a pay raise? Like a... It was not a pay raise, except that I may have mentioned before that the portraits were commissioned. I'm not sure if I did. Um, but the caricatures were also commissioned. It was the same commission, right around 30%. And the caricatures were a pay raise because the caricature booth was in a busy area where a lot of people were. So you get way more customers. Um, yeah, I, so I was doing it in the little western section, the, the portraits. I was doing the portraits in the little western section, and that was called Ghost Town, and it was Ghost Town. Nobody came down there. Um, and I moved to the caricatures uh, over by the log ride. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, log ride at Knott's Berry Farm. But, uh, yeah, I worked there for a year, and uh, and then very similar to how I got the job there, because... Uh, my my printing job had had uh, that shop had kind of gone under and I was laid off. I was laid off again from Knott's Berry Farm because the Knott family sold the park to I think it was Cedar Point West. Um, uh, you know, they they've got I think they have some several roller coaster parks in the Midwest and East Coast and stuff. But uh, so I went up to work at Universal Studios uh, for the same boss. He had more concessions up there. And I worked there for another four years or so. Um, and then moved to Las Vegas, did it there for a year and a half, and then moved up here to Portland. Right on. That's kind of how I got here. Are there, like, I know there are different styles of caricatures. Oh, yeah. There's so there's more different styles than people realize, uh, more than I realized. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you want to check it out, uh, look up ISCA, I-S-C-A, International Society of Caricature Artists. That is actually a thing, and there's thousands of members, and you can see tons of amazing uh, artists there, like world-class artists. Uh, one of our members uh, regularly, Jason Seiler, uh, he illustrates for Time Magazine, People's Magazine, whatever, Forbes. Uh, yeah, he's been on like the cover of. Time, oh, you've seen him. Yeah, seen I stuff, know exactly yeah. who. Okay, you're yeah. About. Um, I don't know him personally, but he is one of our members. So there's a, there's a range of uh, professional levels, um, uh, and you know he's he's one of the top illustrators in the country, you know, and uh, he's a caricature artist. You know? That's incredible. So yeah, so it, there's yeah. there's just huge wealth of talent, and the conventions are great to go to. They're currently not open to the public, although they may become open to the public. We're also trying to get them to bring it down to Seattle at some point, but uh, they may be open to the public on a limited basis because uh, we typically do a lot of competitions and stuff. What? Um, I'm gonna get on the Grinch. I didn't actually make this last year, but uh, but yeah, we're thinking of having a public day where people come in and get drawn by all the artists there and turn that into some sort of competition. Right on. Yeah, which would be amazing mm -hmm. to, to see, yeah. Hell yeah. How long have you been a part of that group? Uh, about three, three, four years, something like that. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, first time I went was in, it moves around the country. First time I went, I think was in, that was in San Antonio, Texas. 2013? Maybe. Yeah. Right on. 13 and or 
2012, Spider-Man 2012. Um, I was gonna ask you this just a, a few minutes ago. What, like, there, there are different kinds of caricatures, but what, where would you place yourself um, in that? Oh, um, I would, I would, I would place myself uh, as a moderate, as a moderate caricature artist. As far as what I do professionally, um, is, uh, it's a, you know, minor cartoony, um, gosh, you know, um, this is the sculpture I did over here. It's a caricature sculpture, but that's not at all. Uh, I got some kind of got a battery issue. I think it is okay. Okay. Um, you know, but that's not. This isn't what I do retail. So, uh, but they're they're kind of cartoony. I was kind of looking around for like one that I could pull out of the. Um, here. Let's see what I got here. Being an artist in, a, in an art house, uh, we've got stuff stashed everywhere. Everywhere. Bro. Everywhere. Okay. Um, I don't know. I guess you should hold these up to the camera. That's what I do. <laughs> you see that? So, right on. there's some people. That's what they look like when I draw them. <laughs> but cartoony, humorous, but not too crazy. Um, I, I wish I was a little braver, to be honest. You know, I wish I could go a little crazier with my drawings in public, but I... I found, yeah, it's not, in the big picture sense, it's not beneficial to me. Um, to uh, go all out. Yeah, because I'm not just a character. That's what I do professionally. And that just means that that's what I do for a living. And, uh, you know, I do, I do care deeply about the craft, but I make other kinds of art. Um, and I... I don't want to put all of my energy into the caricatures, you know, but, uh, it, uh, you know, I see some, I see some of these other artists as phenomenal artists that, uh, you know, uh, in our group, uh, just getting crazy with the, get, taking huge risks in their drawings when they're drawing, uh, customers and, um, it's, it's really inspiring, you know, uh, right it's, on. it's, it's really cool to see what they do with that and, and just, Incredibly creative things, you know. Um, it's it's difficult to describe, but you know, just like really bending people's faces and you didn't think was ways that you didn't think was possible, and then it looks just like the person still. You know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's that guy. It's like, you know, like but he drew it like SpongeBob, but it's like still you can tell it's exactly that guy. So, Interesting, but yeah, so there's you could get lost in it, really. You know, it's uh. uh it, you, you could take the characters in so many different directions, you know. Um, where can people find you around Portland, you and your art? Uh, where can I be found? I try not to be found most of the time, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, as far as uh, as far as the caricature stuff, I've I've got a website. It's called samtoons dot com. Um, I've got, uh, I have a, I have an Instagram that is more of my playground. It's called Funpocalypse. I don't even know if I could spell that out loud. F-U-N-P-O-C-A-P-L-Y. I think you screwed it up. P-S-E. I don't know. <laughs> it's fun. Po it's like apocalypse, but fun instead of, uh, you know, um, but yeah, um, that that's kind of where I sh I show like you know my my sketches and stuff like that. And, um, but it, not really uh, not really showing showing art at the moment. I was doing I was doing paintings for a while and uh, uh, you know kind of doing like fantasy paintings and stuff and having a good time with that. But also. Um, it wasn't it wasn't feasible to pursue there's so much involved in you know uh, moving artwork around from place to place and then storing it and packaging it and 
trying not to have it get damaged and or stolen. I've had ours stolen. Man, it's heartbreaking to have ours stolen. Um, so I, I kind of I keep a low profile. I try, you know, like because art art for me is really is a lifestyle and it's just part of who I am. And uh, I don't always want all. I get I get in the middle of the crowd with the caricatures. You know, I do fairs and. I do company uh, parties and stuff, and uh, I really take my spare time for myself to make my artwork in in a very you know insulated little bubble, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll I'll eventually I'll eventually be showing more of that stuff. But it's uh, for the time being, you know, it's in the sort of in the cocoon, it's in the pupa stage. It's like still still soft, still developing, <laughs> you know. So. I don't want to uh, you know, get into that too much. much. Yeah. yeah, right on, man. Um, what are some of your your goals for the future? Where would you like to see yourself go? Um, goals for the future. Uh, I would. I really. I'd really love at some point to be able to tell some sort of epic saga either with sequential art or animation or or even just a body of work um you know uh but i really i, I would like to create some some form of art that uh, that really draws people in for a while it's not just not just going to be an aesthetic thing or a trend or I want to create something that's lasting, I guess, you know, um, something, something that, something that lives longer than I do, I guess, you know, I guess, I guess that's sort of like a, that's the artist's dream is to, to like you somehow to make yourself permanent, even though we're these mortal things that are just here for a mm -hmm. moment, you know, do you, so you want to do like a book or like um, murals? Well, I guess that's part of what I'm working out right now. Yeah, that's part of figuring out details. Uh, fi figuring out exactly the the how, you know, to the what, and even part of what the what is. Um, but I'm working. I'm working with sculptures right now. I'm working with paintings, and I'm trying to create an environment that. That will both kind of remove the viewer from its reality, and then come back to see it a different way. You know, so I'm, I guess I'm trying, trying to almost create like a portal to take people to the other side. You know, and that's I know it sounds super vague, but all I'm really talking about is, uh, it's like if I could do something like, uh, like. Miyazaki has done with his mm. films, you know, take people for this ride, you know, yeah, man. so uh, that, that means even though all those characters and all those scenes, everything's fictional, but there's, there's a common thread in it that's, that has more weight to it than just that fictional part of it, mm. you know, and, and, and a lot know, of, a lot of Miyazaki's films will take you to another realm and like you said, once you come back to this realm, you're you're a changed, different person because it gives you some perspective. Yeah, one of my uh, huge influence, influences and heroes um, uh, that came later in my life uh, but that I didn't touch on is uh, Ron Frick. Uh, he filmed Baraka, and um, uh, he has a few films before that, but Baraka is the one he's really known for, and uh, then Samsara. Uh, which came out more recently. I don't know if you've seen either of those. I would highly recommend it. Uh, but he... Animator? He's, he's not exactly an animator. Uh, he, he's director, and he he and his crew went around the world and filmed time-lapse photography, and and as well as, well as uh, just regular videography, but um, and made these feature films that are like two hours long, they have nothing but music and imagery, and they I, they're not boring. 
I swear to God, you're not boring. You know, um, it, every every part of it is very impactful and uh, meaningful. But um, it's you kind of just have to watch it. You know, it's a very difficult thing to Baraka? explain. Baraka. Okay. Yeah, I'll check it out. Like Barack Obama, but Barack. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. And in my opinion, kind of cooler. But. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you have any last comments, questions, concerns? Uh, last comments, questions, or concerns? Gosh, you know, um, am I going to throw the firing squad? No, no joke. Okay. you're not. <laughs> cool. No, I, I don't think I do. Um, I know I, I wanted to briefly mention, I, I curate a gallery for the artists that I interview. Uh-huh. Uh, it's called the 4th Effing Friday Gallery, and right now I'm in the planning stages of a very large event uh, for all of the artists. It's it's going to be like my about one year anniversary. It's going after the, the one year anniversary, but all of the artists that I've interviewed over the past year and a half are invited to come show art. Oh, cool. And uh, I had a venue. It fell through looking for a new venue, pushing the date back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that to look forward to. And generally, it's a gallery, a little bit smaller. It's like the artists that I've interviewed in the past month. Mm -hmm. So the artists that I've interviewed from my last gallery till that gallery will be invited to show at my house as well. So you should be getting two invites to show or come okay. hang out. Do okay. caricatures if you want. Cool. What that, really... that could be that could be really fun actually doing caricatures of other artists in a, in a uh, non formal environment. Um, the gallery at my house. There's there's a ton of artists. There's live music always. I provide free booze and food for everybody. Cool. We paint on the walls, and uh, we always have a raffle. So if there's anything small that any of the artists want to donate to this raffle. Uh, they can. It's not a requirement or anything okay. to show. Uh, and then any of the guests that come through can donate five dollars or more to the video blog and the Fourth Up and Friday Gallery, and they get a raffle ticket. So the very last thing we do at the end of the night is raffle off a ton of art from a ton of artists. And but like that's the main feature that people come for is to get really cheap art from Portland's amazing art scene. Oh, cool. Um, so look forward to getting a couple invites. I can I wish I could give you more details about either of them uh, right now. But... It, that's cool, man. Like, uh, you know, my, I'm kind of freelance is my official, you know, state of being. And so my schedule's all over the place. So I just take them as they come. Right on. Yeah. You know? Um, well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to meet you and interview yeah, man. you. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. That's Sam Artisan, the man. I'm Jacob Wolf. This is the Art Life Video Blog, day 156, I think we said. I think that's what we said. That's and, what I uh, said. I don't know. It, <laughs> it goes so fast. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.